The contour tool lets you offset the stroke of a curve or shape and gives you the ability to offset the boundaries of an object by increasing or decreasing the radius amount. So let us go ahead and explore the contour tool inside Affinity Designer, but just using simple shapes. All right, so let us go ahead and kick this off inside Affinity Designer with a blank new document. The first thing I will do is to bring up the grid to be able to align things up. So I will tap on the document menu, tap on the grid, and under the grid modes, I'm gonna set this to standard, and then tap to show the grid like so. Great. Then I'm gonna go ahead and use the ellipse tool. And let's see, I'm going to tap and drag to create a perfect circle. Now, if you want to double check your work, you can always go inside the Transform Studio. And under the dimension, you can check your work. In this case, both the width and the height is set to the same point value. All right. I'm also going to uh, use just this black color for the fill color. All right. And the next step is I want to make sure that I'm using the Move tool. And all I want to do is just basically create a bunch of duplicates. So I'm going to tap and drag, and as I do, I'm going to tap a two-finger modifier on the canvas to create those duplicates. All right, like so. So as you can see, I am randomly spaced those circles out. And once we use the contour tool inside of Fintech Designer, the circles will intersect with each other. But the closer we get those circles to share, the same distance in between, the better the end result we will have. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to use again the move tool. So I'm going to select the circle, for example, and place it, I would say, around here. Place this one there. All right, this one, I'll place it here. And this one over there. Perhaps I need more spacing. I'm not too sure. I'm going to test the work. So what I'm going to do is I will mark you select all of these circles and I will grab the contour tool. Tap on that. And at the bottom of the context toolbar, we have all these options, especially if you look at the contour type right now, it's set to round. And because we are using circles, I'm going to leave this as is. The only thing I will change will be the point radius. In this case, I'm going to do this interactively and I'm going to increase the point radius to something along those lines. Okay, so the issue we are running here is that the circles intersect with each other, but the bottom two circles have uneven space in between comparing to the rest. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to the move tool. And I'm going to tap on this one. And at the bottom of the context toolbar, I will tap on the add selection, tap on this one too. So now those two circles have been selected. So I will just notch them down. All right. And then let's see, I'm going to mark you select again all the circles and look at the distance. Yes, the distance can improve more. All right. Again, let me try this. One more time and not just down even more. Mark you select everything and the distance have been improved even more. Okay, I'm looking at the distance between those intersections. But what we can still improve is the distance between this circle and this circle. So I'm going to tap on that and just make sure there you're on the move tool. And inside the Transform Studio, I'm going to change the position X. So I'm going to tap on that. I'm going to do this numerically. I'm going to go for 8, 10. And this one will be 490. Okay, let me mark you select everything. I believe spacing is better. So I'm going to go ahead and keep that. All right. So the next step is to create a compound shape. So I will tap on the edit menu. And under the geometry, I will tap on the first Boolean operation, which is the add. So tap on that. And now we have a compound shape. 
Then I will grab again the control tool. And then this time I will bring the point radius down. And as I do that, the shapes interact with each other. They intersect again, of course, but basically they interact with each other like a liquid form. And that's what I want to go for. As about the value, let's see, I'm going to set this to minus 50. Okay, I'm just going to do this interactively here, actually numerically, minus 50, like so. Okay, you can play around with these values, of course, it's still, you know, entirely up to you, but I like what I see. And because I like what I see, I'm going to need actually one more set of these curves. So I will duplicate this. So inside the edit menu, I will tap to duplicate this. And let's see, I'm going to change the fill color to this one for now. And then I will tap on the first one, this one. Now we are still on edit mode. If you were to grab again, the control tool, because we haven't baked the appearance yet. So this time I'm going for, we're going to reduce the radius even more. I'm going after the stroke here. All right. So let's say I like this distance between those two. I'm going to tap the baker appearance to bake this in. All right. And then I switch to from filled stroke. Right. I have the stroke set to four points. This is very okay. And inside the layers panel, first of all, let's go ahead and tap on this one. I'm going to tap and hold and bring this at the bottom of the layer stack. I'm going to change the fill color to black. And let's see inside the layer options, we're going to change its naming to contour. And then I'm going to lock this layer so I don't accidentally move it. Great. So now I'm dealing with this curve here, all right? So I'm going to switch to the node tool and I'm going to target the nodes that I don't want to have. You see, I'm going to break those because I only want to use the circle strokes. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to target, for example, this node and at the bottom of the context toolbar, I will tap the break function and now this broke the chain tap on this node i will tap again on the break function tap on that node use the same function and i believe this one too and then again use the break function now still with the node tool i will tap on this node none of the chain has been broken we can go ahead and tap on the trash icon to remove that node tap on this one remove that node and keep going to clean this up and keep only the nodes that you want to keep. All right. And I believe I have two more to go like so. All right. Great. Now let's take a look inside the layer studio and take a look at the individual layers. It looks like those two curve paths are not separated. So I would tap on the edit menu and then tap to separate those curves. Now these are sitting on different layers. So I would tap and drag this middle shape path and bring it under the rest of the curves because later on we will be using that path. So the contour tool did a great job creating this liquid shape. And now we are ready to go to the next step. All right, so let us go ahead and pick this up again and add more elements to our liquid effects. In this case, I will use again the ellipse tool to add more circles. So I'm going to tap on that and tap and drag and then tap one finger on the canvas to maintain the aspect ratio. Great. Now I'm just going to use the move tool. And first of all, let's go ahead and change the fill color. I'm going to move this and place it around here. All right, this is a little bit too small. So I'm going to start dragging from one of the sides here and then use a three finger modifier to resize this around the center point and also constrain the aspect ratio. Something along those lines. Okay. I'm going to nudge this down a bit and release. 
All right. So now I need to duplicate this. So I will tap on the edit menu and tap duplicate. For this second circle, I'm going to size this down a bit again from the very center and change its fill color. So basically we have two different shapes. All right. Now I could have done this actually with just one circle with both a fill color and stroke, but using two separate circles gives me the ability to perhaps use a Boolean function to cut through this liquid shape and have some more options in the future, just in case. All right. So we have that. Let's go ahead and group those two circles. So I will swipe to the right and swipe to the right. And then I'm going to go ahead and tap on the group icon. So here's the first group. Then I will create a duplicate from this first group. So I will tap and drag and tap two finger modifier on the canvas here to create the first duplicate. Target this ellipse, change the fill color to this, create another duplicate, go inside the layer studio, target this ellipse, change the color, continue create another duplicate, target this ellipse inside the layer studio, change this color, and we have one more group here, and I will change this ellipse, the fill color, to perhaps this one, all right? So basically I have five different groups. All I'm gonna do now is just spend a little time on my own here to make sure everything lines up, and I will see you in a few seconds for the next part. All right, let's go ahead and continue this. And this time I'm going to target these circular stroke paths and add an arrowhead style for the start and end stop. And I'm going to do this inside the stroke studio under the advanced options. So first I'm going to style the start arrowhead and I'm going to go through all these styles and I think I'm looking for the circle solid. I'm going to tap on that. And then I'm also going to style the end arrowhead. Again, I'm going to use the same style, this circle solid. There we go. Let me also change the color of the stroke. Now, another thing I can do is add a straight segment that points to a number. So for that, I'm going to use the pen tool. I will tap to create the first node and tap again to create the second node. Now we'll switch to the node tool. Just want to make sure this is a straight segment. I will change the color of the stroke to black. And again, inside the stroke studio, I will change the style of the start arrowhead to perhaps, let's see, a triangle. There we go, all right. And then I'm going to use the move tool to just place this around here. All right, that looks good. Another thing I can do is just, let's see, create a number. So it will be the first one, let's say. I'm going to move this over here, right? So I will continue this, the same treatments all around for the rest of the groups and pick this up soon after. All right, the very last step of this Affinity Designer tutorial involves the addition of some icons that I have already stored inside the Symbols Studio and a text message at the very center of this liquid shape. Great, so look inside the Symbols Studio here. I will tap on the very first icon and then tap to insert this into the canvas. I'm going to place this around the center of the group. And of course, use the same color as the rest of the group, like so. Let's go ahead and insert one more, which is the second icon. Tap, tap to insert, bring this into position, and then change the color according to the group. All right, one last thing here is to target the very center shape here, as remember we worked on it much earlier, and I'm not going to use a stroke just to fill, but in this case, I'm going to go to my grays here and use a very, very light gray, right? And then I'm just going to insert just a text message. 
So that's about it, folks, for this Affinity Designer tutorial using the contour tool, adding circular shapes, doing some cosmetic work to get to this creative idea. Thank you everyone for visiting my channel and watching the inspired lectures and tutorials. Do not forget to subscribe and share the knowledge.